Hi, I'm Dr. David Bilstrom. I'm the medical director of the International Autoimmune Institute at Bingham Memorial Hospital. As most of you may already know, it's autoimmune disease has become very common. But when I was in medical school, one in 400 people developed an autoimmune disease. Now it's one in 12 Americans and one in nine women. Now the first thing is why would we be coming to you from Blackfoot, Idaho? Uh, the reason I left Chicago to come to Idaho and to partner with Bingham Memorial Hospital is in order to do really cutting edge, unique medicine, sometimes it's a big challenge to do it in a big medical center. There's a lot of bureaucracy, you're always stepping on somebody's toes, very hard to do cutting edge medicine sometimes in big centers. Bingham Memorial Hospital being a smaller hospital, very nimble, very quick, they can do cutting edge programming that is very difficult to do in a big setting. For years before I moved to Southeast Idaho, I looked at domestic travel patterns and international travel patterns. When I was in Chicago, many people would come to visit me from other states and other countries. Uh, I need to see somebody in person once a year and if people are going to travel to see you once a year, they like to come to ideally a nice place. And here in Southeast Idaho, many, many domestic tourists and many international tourists come here. We're very close to Sun Valley, Jackson Hole, Yellowstone, Salt Lake City. We've got the Snake River coming down uh, through the valley here. It's a beautiful place to visit and many people come to visit already. But we're going to start with talking about the foundation of, uh, of what happens with the immune system that people develop autoimmune diseases. Basically, autoimmune diseases are all just one disease. You could really just say it's one disease called polyautoimmunity. Ideally, the immune system should wait until something that is not us tries to get into the body and create problems, whether it's a virus, a bacteria, or one of our cells has become cancerous and, and, and now is not us. So it then should attack and get rid of those things. Unfortunately, with autoimmune disease, the body has become confused and starts attacking us. If it attacks the thyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, attacks the joints, rheumatoid arthritis, attacks part of the brain, the spinal cord, multiple sclerosis, attacks the intestines, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, those kind of things. They're all really the same disease, just the immune system attacks different body parts. And that's one of the reasons why when you get one kind of autoimmune disease, you're much more likely to get a second and a third and a fourth. It's not that you really have a new, unique autoimmune disease, it's just the immune system starts attacking a second area, a third area, and a fourth area. Now what I'd like to start with is how do people get autoimmune diseases? The immune system is a beautiful example of how the body loves balance. It's kind of a sweet spot right in the middle. And just like there is in a lot of life, you don't want to be too high or too low, it's kind of a nice spot right in the middle. So ideally, you lose that set point, the immune system starts moving away from it both up and down at the same time. And the upregulated immune system issues are things like your allergies, your asthma, and all the autoimmune diseases. And the downregulated immune systems are things like colds, flus, recurrent infections, and cancer. When somebody loses that balance, starts to move away from it, both up and down, they start developing problems on one end or the other. Time marches on, now they got it on both ends. Time marches on, they start adding new things to the old things. And that's why they say if you get one autoimmune disease, you're much more likely to get a second and a third. Now, a lot of times when people get autoimmune diseases, that they're told, here is this immunosuppressant that you want to take. Now, people tend to feel some better on the immunosuppressants, but they don't feel great typically. And that's because what the body doesn't really want is immunosuppression. What it really wants is immunomodulation, immunorebalancing. That's why they say when you're using an immunosuppressant, oh, by the way, increased risk of infections and cancer. Now, if you know that this happened, and you know that you already have an increased chance of getting an infection and cancer, you may say to yourself, you know, oh, that medicine, is it really the best thing for me because now I have even a greater chance of getting an infection and cancer. So what the body would like is immunomodulation. So, so what is it that does this? We have a lot of good information nowadays as far as what does this. So we know where to look to figure out how people get these things, and that information puts us in a really nice position to bring people back to the middle. So what, so what does this? Vitamin deficiencies, hormone deficiencies or imbalances, chronic infections, toxicity, and unfortunately we live in a very toxic world, heavy metals and pesticides and plastics and those kind of things, and then the gut, the intestines. 
Now the gut tends to be a very big central mechanism for all these others. So if the gut becomes disrupted, it's hard to digest your food and get vitamins and minerals out. You can get vitamin depleted. When the gut's off, it's very hard to balance hormones. And the gut actually makes some hormones like insulin. When the gut gets thrown off, it's very hard to get rid of toxicity. Um, we make a lot of toxins internally. Every cell in our body creates these toxic byproducts of metabolism every day. We gotta get rid of those things. But also, there's tens of thousands of environmental toxins that can get into our system and create problems. So when the gut's dysfunctional, it's really hard to get rid of toxins and they tend to accumulate in our system. When the gut gets thrown off, it, it, it directly adversely affects the immune system too because 80% of your immune system surrounds the gut. So if anything's throwing the gut off, it's going to throw off the immune system. And by doing that, then you can get these chronic infections. So when the gut gets thrown off, all these other things happen that can throw off the immune system. Now oftentimes, you see this start happening at a young age. So like in childhood or teenage years, what you may see is allergies, asthma, maybe some autoimmune disease like eczema, those kind of things. And, and recurrent infections could be a lot of ear infections, strep throat, sinus infections, urinary tract infections, those kind of things, mononucleosis. So you start seeing these kind of things at a, at a young age, you know that the immune system's already been thrown off, and you, you know that people are already starting to march towards other autoimmune diseases, because you already can see that at a young age. And so sometimes these autoimmune diseases start in, in children, but a lot of times the immune system's gotten thrown off at a young age, and they're marching towards the autoimmune diseases that only come as adults. One of the nice things is we have a lot of nice tests nowadays that we can use to figure out how people get there. What I talk about to people is let's test and we don't have to guess. If we guess, hopefully it's an educated guess, but it's still a guess nonetheless. And if we guess wrong, we waste people's time and effort and nothing good comes of it. And that's kind of why people may have seen a lot of practitioners, they're very good doctors before they come to see us, and rather than testing for specific things, guesses have been made and they never quite feel as good as they think they should. So we can test, we can really see in black and white what the heck's going on that's throwing the body off so much that they got these immune system issues. And we may think that this is your problem, but we test and go, well, this isn't your problem, actually this is your problem. Well, I'm glad we didn't waste time doing this, let's do this instead. So it gives us a really good chance to see in black and white what the heck's going on that the immune system has become so confused that it's attacking us and what we gotta do to help people feel better. What I'd like to talk about now in our next video is what things have to happen to put the body in a position to then get the autoimmune disease. How does the pump get primed that then leads to the autoimmune disease? In parting, I'd just like to say, please remember, your body is always ready to heal. It just needs to be given a chance. Bingham Memorial Hospital. Experience Bingham.